In this episode I'm going to take a look at the Anycubic i3 Mega. For about $400 this has some nice features such as power loss recovery and a filament sensor that will shut it off and let you recover from that. Plus I'm going to look at the electronics inside and then we'll do some first prints. I'll do all that on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. This printer was donated to the channel by GearBest for an honest review. If it's good, I'll tell you. If it's bad, I'll tell you that too. Here's all the pieces taken out of the box. It's really easy to put together. It takes like eight screws to put this thing together. That's it. So the upper assembly is all done. It's got the hot end in place with all the wiring done, including the filament sensor, which is that white piece dangling there. It's got dual Z-axis motors with lead screws, and it's an all-metal construction here, stamped steel. It's got a power cable, putty knife, and a full roll of PLA plastic. It's black. So that's a very nice addition. Now on the left side here is the bed, fully assembled, and it's even got a touch screen on the front. If I move it here, you can see it flash. And then a bag of parts. In here are tools and screws and nuts, including an extra hot end. Now why I need that, I don't know, but it's nice that it's included. So now let's check out what's inside this thing. It's got a plug and switch on the side along with a fuse. And when I popped this out, took a look at it, it's a 5 amp fuse. So it's well done from that point of view. It looks pretty safe. Now inside it's got a 12 volt 25 amp supply. So plenty of power to heat the heated bed and such. Now it's got a fan that blows down on the board. And then it's got a LCD display. Like I said, it's a touch screen. And this board here with a ribbon cable going off to the SD card separately. The board itself looks a lot like an MKS base, but it's wired really nice, including it's got two extruders wired, even though only one is on this uh, machine. So it's kind of set up for a dual extruder add-on that comes out to the connector. I don't know how that's going to work, but it's there. I did find a fuse on the board over here by the power connector, and the power connector is actually blocked by the metal. But you got a 15 amp fuse there. If it blows, you got to resolder a new one in. And then I found another same 15 amp fuse you have to solder right next to the FETs here over by the uh, hot end wiring. So it does have safety in it, it's just not easy to replace. It does have an 18 mega 2560, so it's an 8 bit board. It's probably running Marlin, but I don't know for sure. Now the base I took off, and this is interesting. When I line it up, it looks like the fan is actually blocked by this solid piece here. So I thought maybe I put it on backwards. So I flipped the uh, base around, but then the holes didn't line up. So that told me I had it right the first time. So I guess that's the plan, just to block that fan from stuff flying into it. I don't know, but that's, that's very interesting. So here's four of the screws on one side, and there's four on the other to connect the base to that upper section. you got to slide the switch to 110 if you're in the U.S., and the wiring couldn't be easier. you got a red to red connector, a green to green, and then a black to black, and they just snap right in place. I have never seen a 3D printer with easier wiring. They did a great job here. The filament sensor is already wired up, so all you got to do is place it on the bracket that has a magnet, and it's on a ball, so it just kind of pivots. So that was easy to set up. Now what's really interesting is the bed material. It's got a glass bed with this altar base, they call it. It's kind of rough and spotty, but it really works well and it's painted like right on. So I was ready to load up some filament, put it into the filament sensor, and then I just pushed it into the extruder. I could have let the extruder push it all the way through, but it was easier just by hand. So I loaded that up, got some filament flowing, and then I just needed to uh, level the bed. And this was tough because the base was bent here at the back. You can tell by the springs how much I had to adjust it. So I'm gonna have to take this off and fix it, but that got damaged in shipping. But it printed very good. Look at these prints. This is the first sample print that came on the SD card. I think it's a 0.2 layer height. It's two owls, a he and a she. But man, they came out really nice for a first print. I'm impressed already with what this thing can do. But I wanted to test the recover from power loss. So it said I needed to add a G5 to the startup G code. So I went into Simplify 3D. I went into the scripts and then I chose the starting script. And all I had in there was home the axis. And so I added a G5 and then just added a comment to it to tell me what it does. Now, G5, I looked it up. 
it really it looks like their own code. It does something else according to Marlin, so I'm not sure how this works. But it sends some signal, I guess, to save it, uh, save the position in memory. So I clicked on prepare to print, and it said it would take just over two hours to print a Benchy. And it wanted me to put it towards the back so it doesn't get interfered. So it started printing, and then I pulled power, and you can see it just shut itself down. The nozzle was stuck on top of the part, and I plugged it back in. The switch was still on, so power came back up. It went through its startup routine, and then it uh, went right to its standard menu. So I had to press on print, and then from there select the benchy again, and then click resume. And I actually had to hit this twice because of the screen. I didn't press it hard enough. And then I had to wait for it to heat back up. And this took a few minutes, but once it did, it homed itself. And this is why they don't recommend anything towards the front if you're going to you know, use this feature. And, and then it leveled itself and then moved back up to the proper height, went over to the print. Now, that there's a little piece of plastic hanging from the nozzle. I was supposed to pull that off according to the instructions. They give you little tweezers. But it went to work printing, and when it was done, look at this. You wouldn't know that this thing stopped and restarted other than the little blob that's on the other side that I didn't take off. I was so impressed by this. I couldn't see any line where it stopped and started. And so I compared it to a similar print I'd done on my CR-10, and frankly, I can't tell them apart. The quality of the print, and I love my CR-10. I think it's great. They're equal. I don't see any difference, really, between these two prints. So this is incredible. So now I wanted to test the filament sensor. So I just started another print. Again, this is a couple owls, and I didn't even end up finishing it. But I, I clipped the filament, and it keeps running until it leaves the switch. And then it beeps at you, and it lifts the head, and then it gives you this message on the front that you're out of filament. So from there, I just pulled the old filament out, and it came right out real easy. Loaded some new filament through the sensor and then into the extruder. And then I hit continue. And once again, it had to heat up, and it just went back and started printing where it was. Worked beautifully. This machine worked great. I went back and printed the Benchy again, only this time I used their filament to see if it was some cheap junk. It printed really good. It printed really nice. got a nice gloss to it. So this is really nice. Not perfect, but really good for a $400 printer. My first impressions are this is a pretty good machine. The quality of the prints have been really good. Now that bent base plate is a problem, probably from shipping. And their touch screen is resistive touch, so it's a little harder to work than, say, your phone, which is capacitive touch. But that's okay. That's what you get with a cheaper printer. And it works as long as you, you know, you're willing to press harder. But the quality of the prints, which is key, is awesome. And the fact that you get the recover from power loss and the filament sensor, that's something I don't have on any other printer that costs a lot more than $400. So overall, I can recommend this just based on the first week of using it. I want to put a lot more prints through it, and I'll let you know more in the future. But my first impressions are, this is a good printer. Now, if you can get it for under 400 bucks, it's probably a good deal. And GearBest did give me some coupon codes that I put in the description below. If you want to buy through that link, it helps me, and you get a discount. But if you don't want to go through GearBest, that's fine. It just it helps me out if you buy through that. But other than that, I tell you, this is a nice printer. I can recommend it. If you're interested in my other printer reviews, click on this video link up here. If you want project videos, click on the link down here. If you want to help support the channel a dollar a month to Patreon, click on that logo. But most of all, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.